Although Skyrim is infamous for making people evolve into stealth archers, there is this particular playstyle that I prefer that doesn't involve any sneaking. Like the thumbnail for the video implies, what my build is trying to do is to allow the player to fight like Sauron or the Overlord from the Overlord series. This video assumes that you, the player, is playing the Legacy Edition of Skyrim, with all its official add-ons like Dawnguard, Dragonborn and Hearthfire, because I really hate that Todd Howard keeps re-releasing the same game for so many times in the same platform. The race I'd recommend for this build would be, of course, the Breton, as they start out with plus 10 to Conjuration and also plus 5 in skills like Restoration, Alchemy and also Speechcraft. They also happen to have 25% resistance to magic which is very handy to have when fighting mages and dragons, whose spells and breath attacks are capable of ignoring armor. When playing this character, the skills that you should focus on training would just be one-handed, heavy armor, conjuration and restoration. For this reason, it's better to escape out of Helgen with Raylof instead of Hadvar since you'll end up meeting a lot of Imperial soldiers with heavy armor and one-handed weapons. Once you're out of Helgen, I'd recommend going straight to Solitude through a carriage in order to activate the Steed Standing Stone, since it provides extra 100 carry weight and also nullifies the effect of your armor's weight as well. One sneaky benefit of this Standing Stone is that it could actually also nullify the weight of other armors within your inventory, provided that they are the same type, which is a great way to allow you, the player, to bring multiple gear sets with different enchantments. When it comes to leveling, however, my question to you, the viewer, is that do you plan on using any crafting skills with this character or not? If you do plan on leveling crafting skills, then I suggest that you ignore leveling Magicka in favor of Stamina instead, as Stamina will let you power attack more often and also has the side benefit of allowing you to carry more weight. Once you manage to get to the point where you can craft and enchant your own gear, you can just enchant those to reach 100% Fortify Conjuration and Restoration, which would allow you to cast spells without even spending one Magicka. Utilizing crafting will also let you save on magic perk points, as the main appeal of those is to cut down Magicka costs, and if you have gear that can make casting free, all of this can just be ignored. Also, since weapon and armor upgrades are additive instead of multiplicative by nature, you can just upgrade cheaper weapons and armor into absurd levels in order to gain more damage and reach the armor cap. If you don't want to touch crafting skills on the other hand, I'd recommend that you invest in Magicka instead, as getting the right enchantment through random loot can be rather challenging. That, and technically there's also a perk called Respite from the Restoration School of Magic that also allows you to recover stamina through healing spells in order to perform more power attacks. The next question I'd ask is whether you got the unofficial Skyrim patch installed or not. If you didn't have it on, then I'd recommend you to become a vampire instead, as there is this perk within the restoration skill tree called Necromage that increases the power of a spell when it is targeted to the undead, which in this case includes you, a vampire. This perk not only increases the magnitude of most self-buff spells, but also the duration of your spells as well. It also increases the power of whatever enchantments you have on your gear, but again, this was patched out by the unofficial Skyrim patch, so if you have that on, I don't really recommend becoming one. From my experience, if you play this build as intended, the skill that would most likely end up being the highest would be one-handed, followed by Conjuration, then Restoration, and finally, Heavy Armor being the lowest. This is because the way this build fights is that you start fights by casting a summoning spell, then you just beat the living crap out of anything you're fighting with the weapon you have while healing yourself whenever you're damaged or out of stamina. If possible, I do think it's best to train Conjuration and one-handed in equal measure, as Fire Atronac becomes less useful over time, and the sooner you can get expert spells, the better. When it comes to weapons, I personally prefer the mace as it has the best stagger to attack speed ratio out of all one-handed weapon types. That, and it also gets a really nice perk called Bonebreaker that allows you to ignore an enemy's armor rating, which gets more useful as enemies become stronger. Other weapon perks don't really scale with smithing upgrades, so if you don't like maces, you do get to save those three perk points. Despite my love for the build, there is one particular drawback that it has, which is the fact that melee weapons by nature do gain quite a lot from increased stamina, which 
somewhat conflicts with mage builds tending to not have that much to begin with. Arguably a bow would better synergize with this build as not only that bows aren't affected by elemental furies so you won't have to sacrifice enchantments for extra DPS, bows also don't use stamina for shooting, only when bashing an opponent. Still, I make a conscious effort to stay away from ranged weapons as I want to not succumb to the temptation of becoming a stealth archer. There's also the option to just use a beef stew for infinite power attacks, but I find that raw beef can be surprisingly scarce in the game, as there's only two merchants that sell it, and there's even a quest in the Dark Brotherhood that can kill off one of them, so I don't use this unless in emergencies. And that's what I can say about the build. I really do like the playstyle as I'm not that fond of becoming a pure warrior and prefer to mix both martial and magic prowess. I hope this video was useful or at the very least amusing and as always, have a great time.